Overnight, the Bank of Japan joined the Fed in announcing additional asset purchases to help stimulate the economy. Goldman Sachs Chief Financial Officer David Veneer stepped down on Tuesday to retire, while Harvey Schwartz, the global co-head of Securities Division, will succeed him. I'm Lindsay Bell, and the Morning Call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Lindsay Bell with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Markets are pointing to a positive open this morning. We saw the Bank of Japan join the stimulus party with the Fed last week, uh, extending their asset purchasing program. Um, what do you think about this? Is I just surprised? think that's just the cool thing to do, I guess. You know, <laughs> or it's the only thing people could do out there in, in the world. So they're expanding their asset purchases. So basically, joining the same thesis that every country around the world is doing, which is you know printing money, trying to use central planning in order to get the economies moving down the road. But more importantly, that the markets here are acting very well. Perhaps a, a forward indicator that the economy will follow at some point in the next six months to a year. So at this you know, particular point, I wouldn't fight what's going on policy-wise because it's out of your control. The only thing you can, can control is your approach to the stock market and how you maneuver your financial health. We saw the stock sell off a little bit over the last couple days after that great move that we've seen. What does this mean? What levels are you looking at? Is it time to get back in, Going, seeing that today it looks like it's going to be a positive open? Well, at this point, you, you know, everyone should be kind of massaging their positions and maneuvering them. Uh, on Friday, we were here. I talked about uh, the oscillator being plus 60, which was very, very overbought. The RSI was really high. And at that particular point, it was a good time to sell some excitement. We also tweeted and talked about adding to our hedges, maybe getting even more spiders short. And then yesterday, we talked about covering into what has been a move from just say 1474 down to below 1460 for that type of maneuvering if you can if you're quick if you trade all day long you could do that if you're you know a little bit less active there are ways to sell some strength and buy the dip and recently it's been very rewarding to buy as stocks and indices come test their eight day moving average or their 21 day moving average so you, you sell excitement you buy the dip and you look for the best acting groups you know, with great, diff, you know, with great looking part, you know, chart patterns. Let's take a look at the SPX though. Let's go to the chart. <laughs> well, the chart tells a story here. And if you look here at the story of the S&P, even all the way back from October 1st, remember, or October 4th, remember this outside day when the market changed gears, then you had a nice move where a wedge pattern developed before the move of the first quarter. Then after the first quarter, you had this head and shoulders pattern develop, where if you saw it, you could have lightened up, got out of the way for what was, you know, a decent sell off into the June 4th outside day. And then from there, you know, we've had a nice methodical move to the upside. We've talked about this pattern, the cup and handle pattern, where at this point it became very, very tight. You take a closer look here at this, you know, pattern. You saw this was the day the ECB came out and, uh, you know, did everything they can, extraordinary measures and pow, this tight pattern broke to the upside. Then we flagged, and then this is when our Big Ben announced QE3. You had a big two-day move, and now look what we've been doing. Sideways digestion, consolidation, very healthy, eight-day moving average, which we've been riding ever since this last ignition, you know, coming into play. So I don't know if we're going to all of a sudden get up and go, but within this two-day pullback, you've also had leaders just taking off, and stock selection has been key. But overall, you know, the pattern of the market looks a lot higher. I don't think of the highs of the year are in. Home builders in the sector spotlight is what we're going to cover because they've been a strong group all year. They've been digesting over the last couple of days too. But yesterday we got home builder confidence that came out to be the highest level in almost six years, which is pretty impressive. We'll get more data on the housing recovery today with existing home sales and starts and permits. But this group really has done well throughout the year. If we take a look at Lennar, for example, that stock has tripled in less than a year. Macro investors have clearly been rewarded. How about the micro? Well, there are different times when you have good trades in there, and Lennar has been a leader. So before mm -hmm. I get into that, I just want to show you the, the home building ETF itself. So even if you didn't want to create alpha in some of these awesome stocks that have been making new highs, you know, giving you a bigger return than the ETF, look at the ETF, look at the XHB. We've been talking about this all year. Started in the beginning of the year with Kramer talking about how potent the move was off the bat. Right here is when you know, it broke above the, the resistance and has been methodically moving all the way to the upside. Riding the eight day, which is the thesis we're talking about. At this point, you had a two day move to the eight day, so you have to trust that. 
until the trend changes, you have to buy the dip there. And if it does, you know, not hold there, maybe you have a move down to the 21 day, but I, I, I really would be very surprised if this changes. And if you go to a stock like Lenar, like you said, you know, giving you alpha, if you're a stock picker, if you have that kind of risk tolerance, and here you go, two day pulling, you know, coming back after a nice breakout to the eight day. So at this particular point, you know, we, we never really like to buy excitement. You want to buy the dip and it's coming into 34.92 with a bit more risk. I, I do bet you that this makes new highs once again. But overall, you know, the, the trend is up. You could draw, you know, take your crayon out, put a piece of paper, boom, following the trend. Could use a little bit of consolidation here before it goes. But overall, this trend is strong. You just have to buy it right or you're just sitting in on a macro level until it changes. Ryland's a similar looking chart. They saw a pullback in the last couple of days. Are we waiting to see the 8 and 21 day catch up in that stock as well? It's, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but when there's a thesis that's trending, mm -hmm. the trend is your friend. And if you look at Ryland, it also, you know, doing very well. You, you know, you take out your, you know, your trusty little pencil here. This was the last time that it broke out right here when it traded above this level. Since then, nice move to the upside, two down days. Let's see if it holds the eight day. And even if it doesn't hold the eight day, you know, strong stocks hold their 21 days. So the eight and 21 are great to follow. And if you look here, last time it had a big move, you know, had a two day pull in, you know, played around with the eight day and then held the 21 day. And then it even actually corrected a little bit more. Oh no, it touched the 50 day, which was definitely, you know, a more smoother return. So if you look at the 50 day, you know, for a macro investor, typically they follow the 50 day, whereas intermediate slash active traders follow the 8 and 21. So you just have to know how active you want to be, but this stock looks good as well. Pulte, this stock has had the best return in the group all year long. Uh, also saw a little bit of a pullback. Do you think it's going to need a pullback more though than um, the, the rest, just given the strength that it's had? Um, no, I think that you don't want to, you know, chase an extension, but mm -hmm. it too, it just, every stock has their own speed, their own composure. And if you look at this one, you know, it does look like it's a bit extended, but you know, here it's the same, same story. You could draw a few different trends. This is one trend that it's not even coming close to testing. And then you have this more accelerated trend that it's been following, which is the eight day. So while this is all in play, you can't doubt it. But again, you know, if we broke this one, you know, you, you can still see a healthy pullback to this one. So that's why you just never want to buy too much on the dip, but it's still following the eight day, 21 days right there. And, you know, at some particular point, it, it seems like it'll take out this high again and, and it's not broken. So don't fix it. And until it breaks, I, I would not just be looking to get short these things. There's been too much money to be made on the upside. Exactly. KB Homes was a laggard after their second quarter earnings report that was weaker than expected. We're going to get their third quarter report on Friday, but you know, it hit at the year's high on Friday, pulled back these last couple days, just like the rest of the group. Um, do you play with it going into earnings or kind of wait till that passes? Well, my thesis is unless you're a macro investor, mm -hmm. you know, that you hold through earnings as an intermediate trend trader, we tend not to take stocks into earnings. We trade them after hours or maybe mm -hmm. we take some kind of option strategy. You know, but for this one, uh, a lot of these home builders have had big moves, so they're a little bit more prone to what could be some type of disappointment if the numbers aren't great. If you look at the chart of this stock, you know, there have been definitely a few different times to buy it. Here it made its low. You know, you had a, a pretty spirited move before giving you another descending channel where this would have been a, a nice little entry for you. And then it re-energized as it cleared this resistance. And now, you know, here's your extension. You know, this, this day right here, just to show you, um, is on, on a short term level, a bit bearish because you broke out and then this day engulfed it and came in. So that's why maybe a bit of a short term sell signal. And we are at the eight day use, you know, 1255 as a level to, you know, if you're, if you're not committed to it as a high level stop. And if this does get breached, you know, here's your 21 day moving average. We've seen, you know, it come in and test it a few times. So, you know, this is one of those times where does it, you know, stay higher and keep everyone pent up or does it come back in and test the 21 day? But at this point, trend is still to the upside, you know, draw this line and, you know, we're not getting breached. And at this particular point, stay with it. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and come back with some of the oil refiners. Hi, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer for T3 Live, and I would like to invite you to join us on October 6th and 7th in New York City for our first annual T3 Live Active Trader Super Conference. The two-day event will focus on what we believe to be the five keys to being a successful trader. We will teach you the strategies, tactics, and mindset we take to the market every single day. And you will leave the super conference 
with their personal step-by-step -step success blueprint. Visit t3live.com and click on the education tab on the top of the page and watch preview videos of this event. Seats will fill up quickly, so be sure to reserve yours today. My colleagues and I look forward to meeting you. Have a great day. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at oil. We've seen some crazy moves in it in the last couple of days. There was some speculation on Monday that the $3 move that it made in a minute was related to a technical glitch. But I think now you're kind of seeing more of a macro thesis here with the Saudi Arabia taking action to lower prices. But let's take a look at the OIH, Scott. What are you seeing in there? How's it moving? Well, this, this group hasn't been a leader. It was one of those groups if you targeted, you know, in the second quarter going into the third quarter, you, you made some alpha for yourself. But just goes to show you that markets rotate. At this particular point, you've had a three-day pull-in. Maybe it was a bit harsher than some of the other groups out there, but I still don't think that it, it's, it's game over. If you look at the chart here, you will see that this group bottomed in June. But, you know, it also, it, it was at lows, not like some other groups that were holding higher. It looked well below some of this other support. So anyway, you know, here is your red dog reversal, quick move up. Remember, we talk about gaps. You know, this group never even attempted. Not This isn't a stock, this is a group. Gapped up never filled it so right here even if you were bearish on this group this is when you could have got back involved and then when it broke this downtrend that's your ad and then since then it's been nice methodical you know you just had a three-day pull in to the eighth day uh, i don't tend to i haven't loved this group to trade and you know i haven't been really focusing on it i know sperling is in a lot of those names and i think that you guys like to focus on this group but you know into this area this is now support question is we go a little sideways and then continue or do we come back and shake the tree a little bit more down to the 21 day you know if there's any group that could probably get to the 21 day it is this one so don't be too aggressive buying back into this area but there are a lot of great names out there and you know we'll see what this leads to if it was a glitch or a little bit more now the oil refiners is a subgroup within the oil category and they've had a great run this year uh, but this week we saw two downgrades to neutral from city and credit suisse on a couple of the names one of those names was valero it's now touching its 21 day do you think that this is support for the, the name or could it go lower it's going to serve as support and this is just a, a, a actual an example how some stock you know it ran it held the eight day and followed it all the way up and then that very high angle of of just say of uptrend what or whatnot however you want to say it was a, was breached so you take notice to see if there's a composure change and if you look here at valero that look at the size of this move it's had from these lows and from this low if you want to draw you know your your trend line you know it basically held the one that's been in place since the lows you know you had a bit more of an accelerated trend line that it did break so for the active trader i bet you got out of valero right here okay but that's different are you an active trader or are you a, a intermediate or or a swing trade not a swing trade, a macro investor so here you know on this day i bet you a lot of guys got out of this stock rightly so you know pretty pretty potent you know closed near the lows broke this trend but this more smoother macro trend is still in place so at this point i think you have to watch it to see if it leads to anything more um, if you're if you're looking to buy back if you did sell some excitement and got lucky there or whatnot or sold here now see how it handles a 21 day sometimes you rally up and retest a broken trend line if it were to stop here make a lower high and then continue then i would think there's more problems there for now I'll probably, I'm going to be avoiding it if you're an investor there. Just be a little bit careful that this little break of this accelerated trend doesn't lead to a bigger break of this macro trend. Phillips 66 is a refinery business of what used to be ConocoPhillips. Um, they spun off from that, that company in May. The stock's up 40% so far since then. Um, but they also got downgraded this week. Yesterday it traded through the eight day, but it closed well above those levels. So is that, that is an encouraging sign? I just think this one also needs a little bit of time to prove itself. I don't think okay. you need to rush out, you know, double downgrade. And, you know, I, I, I don't really mind downgrades after a huge move. You know, like if you look at the stock here, you'll see, you know, from here all the way up to these highs, if you're going to downgrade it, not so bad. I love people selling excitement. I hate when people downgrade it over here. You know, well, what kind of value is that? But anyway, you know, it did break just like um, if you want to look at this little trend, it did break the eight day right here. So I'm sure if guys were trailing it and following it, they probably got out. And now let's see if it could do some work around the, the 21 day. So at this particular point, here's your new level of support. Same way as Valero, can of reclaim this area or can you reshort this area for a move down to even, you know, guys, the macro 
investors still watch the 50 day and the 150 day or even the 200 day. So right now I just think we're, we're pretty spoiled to the fact that we're riding the 8 and 21 day because when you ride the 8 and 21 days, basically you're not, <laughs> you're not getting much of a pullback. So mm -hmm. for guys like me, you know, first quarter, there wasn't like a, a big pullback. So I was holding 10, 12 positions and you could ride it for three months. August, same thing, held like six, seven positions. And recently we've been able to hold positions again. I think I come into today with about seven with a short. So when that trend is powerful and intact, you ride it until it changes. And when it changes, it doesn't mean you get out of the way as a macro investor, it just, you know, you could be a little cuter as a trader. Uh, Marathon, it's another refiner. They're, these guys are supposed to have really good earnings reports, by the way, in this third quarter that's coming up, um, which is part of why they've run, I think, and why these, these um, analysts are saying that the valuation is high. But Marathon had, uh, they were down worse yesterday than the rest of the group. Uh, but is, is this sort of a same thing here? You gotta wait for more of a pullback in this, gotta prove itself. Well, this pattern's a little different. If you take a look at Marathon, just go right to the chart, you'll see that this didn't have a move all the way up to the highs like some of the others. You know, you had a nice methodical buy through maybe 28, and then it continued higher. So, and this two-day move, you know, isn't as potent as this. You know, the, other, the other stocks had like, you know, one day taking out a few. This one is a bit more controlled, so I think you perhaps could trust the eight-day a little bit more. So watch how it handles this area. If you if you sold into some excitement, this would be an area to look to buy back. Or, again, if we get a little bit more pressured, here's bigger support at the 21-day, which comes in at uh, 2871. And then I just wanted to bring up Holly Frontier. This is a name that Jim Cramer had had on Mad Money. He likes it because of their positioning in the Midwest. Again, it's, it's had a bit of a run, but it seems to be finding support around the 8 and 21 day average too. Same concept. I'm sure if he's promoting it, not or talking about it, he knows it a little bit better fundamentally. The chart looks the same as the others. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do some quick hits. We got to start with Apple. This Friday, the iPhone 5 will actually be released. It'll be out in the public's hands. Are we going to see the momentum here? Should, does this one need to take a break? I think this could use a little bit of a break. I've been I've been holding this thing on. You know, I've held it for many weeks, different times of the year. This mm -hmm. last initial time period since they actually unveiled the iPhone 5, it's been a very you know method, not even methodical, just a beeline move to where it is now. So made it very easy to hold for what has been a 30-point move since last Wednesday. So if you look at the chart, there are a few different times to do this. One was right here when it broke above this uh, 620 area, gave you really no pain whatsoever to hold it all the way up to almost 670. And then the recent one was after they you know, showed the iPhone 5 to the entire world, which was right around here. If you remember, you know, they sold it before, and then you had this nice move the last hour of the day that Wednesday. That's when we got back in. And since then, you could have made for yourself almost 30 to 40 points, depending when you bought it. So at this point, you know, can it continue? I'd love it. I'm still holding it. But if it doesn't, I don't think you get scared. Um, the the eight-day moving average comes in around 689. You do have a small little ascending channel here. So if it, were, if it were to start to get below, I would say 696. Some fast money guys will probably sell it, and they'd rather buy it back here. You know, but at this particular point, what I really like to do is I'd like to see it base above you know, 695 or even 700, but I don't think they make it that easy. And then at some particular point, you know, we see uh, above 750. So if you're a macro equity investor, stay with Apple. If you trade intermediate trends, you just probably booked where you, you have 30 or, or 40 points in the bag so you could trim some and trail some. And then, you know, if you're looking for a cute short, just be careful because cute, you know, being a cute short here lasts for maybe a few hours or sometimes a day or two. That's about it. How about LinkedIn? Can we see the eight day as support here? LinkedIn has you know, been getting a lot more institutional interest. Um, it's had a few different moves for the active trader, for the macro investor, trusting it. You've been paid. You know, I am long some of this versus that eight day. If you take a look at the chart, you will see you know, after hitting, what was this, 125.50, a nice pullback to the eight day. So I'm trying to buy things as they move to the eight day and trust them because that's what's been working. You know, this was your momentum buy above 110, and now it does look like the market wants to hang in there and stay constructive. This is definitely in the game for what could be a lot higher prices come the end of the year. The XL up, we've seen pull back the last couple days. Is this something that we expect to continue, or do you think we're finally at a level where they can maybe see upside? Well, Friday, we talked about selling strength. We talked about getting a cute short around 122 in Goldman. And then yesterday, I covered mm -hmm. my shorts in Goldman. And I said, you know what, let me nibble on the XLF. You know, let me see how these banks act. And if you look here, after three down days, it's worth a try, especially if you sell some excitement. You know, and then it still has some room to the eight day, and it's been following the eight day again. So as long as it continues to follow the eight day, 
you stay with the trend. And right now, it's still a little bit above. You have 1591. I know some guys got short on this day, added here, covered yesterday. If you did, that was tactical. It was cute. We did this with Goldman Sachs. You know, it had a nice little move. But look, look, look what you're trying to do here. This is what a, a doctor is trying to operate on here to get, you know, make money short. <laughs> the, the real money has been to the long side, and that's when it ignited, boom, and now the eight days catching up. So if this trend were to stay intact, you will see, you know, Goldman Sachs stay above 117.84. Well, that's all we have time for today. So those are the sectors we're watching, the stocks we're looking at, and the levels in the S&P that we're keeping our eye on. Be sure to check in at the end of the day with Scott and the T3 Live team for the daily recap.